and tonight we're going to start running with the word for a few moments and then we're going to move to the praise team the choir is going to join in with the praise team to combine a praise choir amen and we're just going to we're going to usher in a presence of the lord and to begin to worship and praise god and stir up some of this word that has already been given to us amen by the grace of god i don't plan to be talking to you long amen maybe about just about 20 minutes first samuel chapter 11 first samuel chapter 11 and in verse 9 Verse 9 and verse 10 of 1 Samuel chapter 11. Let's read this together. And they said unto the messengers that came, Thus shall ye say unto the men of Jabesh Gilead, Tomorrow, by that time the sun be hot, ye shall have help. And the messengers came and showed it to the men of Jabesh, and they were glad. Therefore the men of Jabesh said, Tomorrow we will come out unto you, and you shall do with us all that seemeth I wanted to speak to you out of verse 9. Saul said these words unto the men of Jabesh Gilead. When the sun gets hot, help is on the way. I want to just speak that to your spirit. When the sun gets hot, help is on the way. Come on, tell a few people that. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them that. When the sun gets hot, help is on the way. When things start getting hot, honey, that's when help is on the way. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to somebody. Yell out, hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's good to exalt that name of Jehovah. God bless you as you're seated in the presence of the Lord. The story is not so much of an intricate story. It is simply the men of Jabesh Gilead were confronted by an army. Without getting into all of the intricate details of the names and the peoples, it just came down to this. The men of Jabesh Gilead were ready to surrender because they did not have the help nor the strength they needed to conquer the army that was facing them. When they sent word to these people and said, we will bow to you, we will surrender to you, that wasn't enough. How many know that if even if you decide that you're not going to come to church and praise and worship God, you're, you're not going to try to get involved in things, that the devil is never satisfied with just that? If you give in to your praise, if you give in to your worship, if you, if you decide that you're not going to do any of these things, how many know the devil keeps trying to get more and more and more and more? And that's what happened with the men of Jabesh Gilead. They were ready to surrender, but that wasn't enough for the enemy. The enemy said to them, fine, the only way we now we will accept your surrender is if you give us your right eye. Cut out your right eye of all the men and give it to us. I'm, I'm telling you, the devil's never satisfied. If you're willing, amen, to come and just sit in the presence of the Lord and, and silence, and you think, you think you're think you making an appeasement with the enemy, that if, you know, making a little treaty, if I don't praise, you leave me alone, you've got to be kidding. He always reaches for more. He always reaches to try to destroy you further. He always reaches to try to take something deep and nearer from you. So the men of Jabesh Gilead were dealing with this, this trauma, this situation. So they sent words. King Saul, he's not king yet, he's soon to be. He got word of this. The Bible says he took an ox, he cut it up, he sent it out through the land of Israel. He simply said to anyone that does not come out and follow me, this is what's going to happen to you. This is what happened to your animals. The Bible said the fear of the Lord fell upon them. How many know the fear of the Lord will cause you to fight? The fear of the Lord caused people to get up and to fight. The fear of the Lord caused people to stand. The fear of the Lord caused people to run forth and lunge into battle. It was the fear of the Lord that caused people to say, we're not standing for this. We're going to fight. Saul sent them word, and they were so glad for the word. He said, when the sun gets hot, when it's noontime, when the sun has reached the peak of its heat, he said, you can expect to see an army coming down the pathway. 
And that's what God is saying to some of you. He just wants to encourage you. He just wants to strengthen you because some of you got some sons that are really hot in your life. You got some things right now that are burning up in front of you. And God said, when things just start to get hot, he said, look around because your help is on its way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God for help. The concept that God wants to draw to this church and draw very strongly is that he is an on-time God. He is a God that may not come when you particularly want him, but he will make sure he's right on time. And when your God comes to deliver you, can't nobody hold you, can't nobody seal you up, can't nobody keep you back. When God is ready, can't nobody hold you down. I don't care what demonic force has told you that you'll never be anything. I don't care what demon in hell has tried to step on your self-esteem or step on your consciousness. When God gets ready, they have to move. Somebody say, yes, Lord. You see, my friends, when God decides that he wants to make you, when God decides that there are things that are going to transpire in your life and he's going to make you great, there are things that are going to get real hot and hot quick. Let me tell you why they're going to get hot. Because the devil is not looking at your color. He's not looking at your height. He's not, for say, looking at your gender. He notices the intensity of the call. He knows the anointing. And that starts to scare him. Therefore, he starts attacking you with a, 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 a bombardment that is second to none. And you wonder in yourself, what's going on here? I'm not doing anything great. I'm not anybody special. I'm just shuffling along through life. Why is all of this happening to me? But friend, there is something Something that is in your life that the devil is afraid of and wants to take away from you. Since he can't take it away from you, he wants to shut it down. He wants to make you afraid. He wants to make you insecure. He wants to make you feel unworthy. And that way you will lay down every weapon and you will think you will never be anybody or anything. But just at the peak when it seems like he has you by the juggler vein, here comes God. Just at the point when he's ready to squeeze your neck. Here comes God. Just at the point when it seems like, amen, the devil's getting ready to step on you and you will never walk again. Here comes God. God comes with a word of deliverance. God comes with a song into your heart. God comes with a revelation into your spirit. God comes saying, you shall not die but live. God coming saying that you're going to stand tall. God's coming and saying, not so. Has anybody heard God say that? Just at the point when your family is getting to break up. Just at the point when your family, amen, seems to be rocked and your finances are rocked. Just at the point when you don't know what next to do. It takes God. Here comes God. When you have reached the point where you can go no further, here comes God. God comes stepping out, amen. You don't even know where he came from. You don't even know, amen, where his destination is even totally going. But what you know is when he is done, he shall lift you high and above the situation and you shall know that there is a God that lives, and the enemy shall know. There is no sickness. There is no kind of infirmity that can attack the child of God that brings you to the point where you cannot conquer. What God is telling this church here today, all that the Lord has told you in this revival, words that you've heard before this revival, things that God has laid down to you in your personal time, in your devotional time. You know what God's trying to tell you in a nutshell? You are more than a conqueror through him that loves you. God's trying to tell you, arise, O army, arise. That even though right now you seem to be struggling somewhere, God said just when things get to be their worst, I'm getting ready to bring you out. And when I bring you out, I'm bringing you out with power. Somebody thank God for a fresh anointing. There is a fresh anointing. Some of you want to know why you're being stepped on. God wants to remind you 
He wants to remind you. He wants to remind you. How do you get olive oil? How do you get olive oil, which symbolizes the anointing? You get it from the olive being stepped on. You get it by people taking off their shoes and putting the olive in a bin and stepping on it until only olive oil begins to flow out. That's why you feel confined in your situation. That's why you can't find a way out. That's why people are stepping on you because oil is getting ready to flow. Anointing is getting ready to flow. And even though you've been underfoot, it shall not always be this way. But God said, you're getting ready to come out and you shall be the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. 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 I have just got to answer just one question before we get ready. Listen, one question. How long? Because sometimes that's what wears us down. I want to know, does somebody understand what I'm talking about? How long? Okay, I can get excited about this. Okay, I can believe this. But how long do I have to go through this? Friend, let me tell you the answer that God gave me to how long. God said your problem is not how long. Your problem is the strength to go through whatever it is you must go through. Friend, if it's just five minutes, but if you don't have the strength to last five minutes, that five minutes will go in eternity to you. It can be a year, but if you don't have the strength to last the year, the year can seem like forever to you. But you can go five years and ten years, and when you have the strength of the Almighty God and you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you fear no evil because God is with you. The question is not how long. But who is with you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. So how do I survive the battle? How do I survive the bombardment? Because I'm going to tell you straight after you get done with this revival, after you've left this church, amen, some of you are not even going to get out the door tonight. And the enemy's already going to try something. Somebody's not going to shake your hand right. Somebody's not going to say a right word to you. Somebody's not going to give you a right look. The devil's going to jump in your head asking what are they looking at and what's their problem and what's their major malfunction and why are they looking at me like that. And God said, make up in your mind right now that I've already got the help I need. I will not relinquish my victory. I want to know if there are any fighters in the camp, because what God needs tonight are some fighters. God needs some people that know how to fight. He needs some fighters. He needs some warriors. Oh, yes! Hallelujah! You know in Israel, when Israel many times would get ready for battle, this is what they would do. They would start that war cry. They would start to shabak, to address in a loud football kind of stadium tone. And they would tell the enemy by their war cry that they were coming. And that's why they would go, hallelujah. They heard the scream of warriors. And don't you know when you open up your mouth and the praises of God coming out of your mouth, you are telling the devil, I'm coming. I will fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. 
The Lord has just one notion. The Lord just has one notion, one, one concept to get into your spirit tonight. Just one thing to deplete into your spirit. God wants to get one thing into your mind. Well, maybe I should say a few things. Listen, for you to effectively fight, you got to watch distractions. For you to effectively fight, you got to deal with diversions. For you to effectively fight, you got to have no other gods in your camp. For you to effectively fight, you got to be focused on your commander and every command of your commander. You got to believe what your commander says and not what your enemy says. Is there anybody in the house that believes what God said? Let every man be a liar. Let God, let God be true. Hallelujah. Is there anybody in here that believes that they are victorious? That doesn't mean you don't have problems. That doesn't mean you don't have difficulties. To be victorious, you've had to have warfare. You've got to be victorious over something. That does not mean that you don't have something trying to press against you. But what it means is you've already made up your mind, I shall not be moved like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. I am not a punching bag. I want to just get this part across to you. I am not the devil's punching bag. That's what's been happening to some of us. We've sat back and let ourselves be the enemy's punching bag. He tells us we're unworthy. He tells us we're losers. He tells us we're nothing. He tells us we'll never be anything. And we just take blow after blow until we're finally flat on our faces and don't have any strength to stand. But friend, there's something where you can stand up and say, I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! God said it's time now to grab hold of the promises. It's time now to believe his word like you've never believed it before. Do not believe your situations. Do not believe what everything you're hearing, but believe what the Word of God says. Don't believe what you're feeling. Believe what God says. God said you may not feel like you're going to be anything or anybody, but look back in the face of the devil and tell him what God said. God said he's going to use me. God said he's going to bless me. God said I shall be an overcomer. God said I'm the head and not the tail. I believe what God said. I believe what God said. Come on, choir. Come on, praise team. Come on, musicians. Hallelujah, because God's getting ready to do something in this house. God said amen as they're coming. God said, I want people in the house to get ready to rejoice. I want you to get ready to bless your God. I want you to believe in what I've said to you. I told you all week long that you're powerful. I've been telling you for months and years, saith the Lord, that you're somebody. Tonight, you're going to grab it by the horns and pull it to yourself and tell the devil, this is mine. Tonight, as we get ready to enter into praise songs and we get ready to lift up the name of the most high God, we're going to get ready to exalt his holy and his, we're going to get ready to bless him on high. And God, God's looking for some warriors. Come on. Come on. 